guys. Happy Monday. It's Tabitha here with McHarper Manor. Welcome back for another art project. Thanks to Happy Groundhog Studio, we have Missy here with us today, and Aubrey is our happy helper of the day. She is going to paint with us today. How are you guys doing? How was your Easter weekend? I hope everybody had some good opportunities to relax and rest and play. Um, we had fun. We had a little. We had a little Easter um, dinner and got some cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so I want to hear how your weekends were. I want to hear how you guys did. I hope that you guys were able to um, do something creative and have some fun and rest and enjoy each other. Um, we are back today for three days this week. So we're here today, Wednesday, and Friday this week. So three projects this week. Today's project is going to be an acrylic painting on canvas but we're gonna do some cool processes with that. So I'm gonna tell you guys what supplies you need so you can go gather them, and then we'll talk for a little bit and then we'll start the project. So we need a canvas today. We also need some acrylic paint or craft paint, whatever you guys have. Um, we're gonna need some brushes in varying sizes. We also need um, a water basin, and you can have an apron if you need um, to cover yourself cover your surface, um, a palette to, or a plate somewhere to put your paint. And then um, we're gonna do a resist today, which means basically we're gonna create some negative space in our painting. So we're gonna use things like masking tape or washi tape if you have these. If you don't have masking tape or washi tape, you could probably use scotch tape. Um, it's just not as sticky to the fiber, so it lifts up a little bit, so you get a, more, a little bit more of those jagged edges, like less like a stencil. Um, some other things that I thought you might be able to use, some stickers, or like we even have some of those labels that you use for, you know, packages, like the to and from little Christmas labels. Um, we also have just like some mailing labels that you could cut shapes out of. And these are those self-adhesive ones that you can use and just kind of, you know, peel off and you could tear pieces of that and put it down. We just want to create something that has um, some negative space on this painting. So what we cover up, the negative space is going to be what stays white. So what we cover up with a piece of tape, that part of our canvas is gonna stay white and we're gonna paint everything around that, okay? So we're gonna make some cool pictures and images with our tape or stickers or whatever our resist is. So that is what I need you to gather. Um, if you were just expecting a, an acrylic painting and you don't have anything sticky like that, um, you can just, you know, mark out some lines and create some negative space too. So find something sticky if you have it, um, tape, washi tape, you know, these little sticker guys, any kind of stickers would work. So just grab some things that might stick. Meanwhile, we're going to talk about some um, questions we've had over the weekend. So you guys have been asking about the membership site and I wanted to give you guys some, you know, basic cover some of the frequently asked questions about that. So the membership site stuff, um, we're going to have more info for you coming this week. We are building it as we speak. So it's not all set in stone. That's why I can't give you guys like all the information and release everything now. What I can do is have you go to our website, mcharpermanor.com and then sit there for about three seconds and a pop-up is going to come up and it's going to say, hey, we're launching a membership site. Do you want more info? And then you put your email in there and then it'll send you over to where to, you know, subscribe to our web, to our email list for that. And then once we get all the info, then you'll be the first to know. You'll have all the information you need to register, all of that stuff. Um, but that is how you would sign up for the info for it. That's not how you sign up for the membership. That's just how you sign up to get information for it. You're not signing up for anything if you do that other than just to be in the loop and know. Um, the membership site, people's biggest question is, oh my goodness, we ordered these supplies to do your projects and the membership site is coming. Are you going to delete all of it? No. We are not deleting anything. All of this free content that we've created for you, it's a gift. It is for you. This six weeks of content, weeks one through four that have four projects a week, I'm sorry, five projects a week, those 20 projects aren't going anywhere. 
weeks five and six, these three projects this week and the two projects next week, those aren't going anywhere either. You will always have those 25 projects plus the Shrinky Dinks, plus Butterball the Cat, plus anything else random I come up with, date night, all of those, those will live in YouTube and on our Facebook page forever. Okay, those are not going anywhere. That is my gift of love to you. Those were gifts for, you know, therapy to get through all of this. I am never going to take that stuff away. That is that is for you, that is forever. So don't stress, if you have not made it through all the projects, take your time. You have the rest of your life to do the rest of these projects. The membership site is for people who have done every project and they love making art with me and they wanna make more and I wanna give them more. Um, the membership site is for people who want six to eight projects a month. Um, and depending on the intricacy of it, people who provide homeschool for their kids all the time and they want an art resource that they can have available to have, you know, at their fingertips for their kids, just really awesome curated projects to do at home, something manageable, something that they don't have to, you know, really dig deep and try to find, you know, theory and things like that, that it's all just kind of built in for them. It's just a service. It's not anything required to hang out with me. I'm still gonna be doing stuff for free. We're still gonna be hanging out with you guys and doing live streams at least a couple times a month. We're gonna see as time allows, um, you know, the ability to do, you know, maybe even one a week. We're still gonna be doing live streams here on Facebook for free for you guys, with you guys. My kids may be in school. You, you may get them at a wonky time or it may just be me sitting here if it's during the day, but you guys are still gonna have free access. The membership site is for people that need more. The membership site is for people like when we offer our after school art club here at our studio for our local kids, that's for the kids that need more. That's just what I say. Homeschool kids that want something in your curriculum, um, kids that love art and they really want to express themselves through art and they want to do it every day um, or even every weekend or like an extra bonus class for them. Six to eight projects a month is going to average out to about a, a project or two a week. Um, extra for kids. So it's a really good supplement, but it's definitely not um, something that everybody has to do. It's also something that I'm going to be able to do, dive a little deeper with you guys. These projects may be two-step projects. So we may do part one. So today I'm going to show you kind of a preview of how a two-step project might work. Um, and I'm going to give you continued steps. So like Friday when we did the sock puppets, we did sock puppets and then we talked about next steps. So there are projects that I'll be able to guide you through both steps. So sock puppets and then build a background. Maybe, you know, on a membership site, we would have a deeper project like Project one, we make the sock, sock puppets. Project two, I walk you through the background. So it just gives us more opportunity and things to do like that. Um, you know, the tutorials are gonna be things, I'm gonna give you ways to amp them up and down, kind of like we've done here. This is just, you know, a very quick um, live option. The other tutorials you can really get a lot deeper with. So that's what that's for. Don't feel like I've had some messages like, we will subscribe, just leave the tutorials up for another month. Those tutorials are going to be up for months and months and months and months for your lifetime. So don't feel any pressure. That's just something that I'm another service that I'm offering to people. It's zero pressure. You get everything we've given for free forever. Um, the membership is going to go live after week six. That's the plan right now, unless some, some hiccup comes up. Like I said, we're building this. Um, the tentative release date is April 24th. So we'll be providing information about that as it comes up. It's going to be around $20 a month. There are going to be options for a monthly subscription, a three-month subscription, six-month, nine-month, 12-month. And you're going to get, you know, better deals, great deals. If you, you know, commit to doing a year with us, that'll help us to have the revenue to pull in, you know, helpers and things. And you'll get a better deal for that, for being able to have us, you know, help us have some income that we can count on for that. So those are going to be, you know, the perks to that. Um, and there, we're offering, we're going to add in some cool camp experiences too. Nobody knows what we're going to be able to do for summer. Um, we, we don't even know if we're going to be able to reopen our studio for summer camps this summer. And summer camps are the biggest part of our revenue here at McHarper Manor. Summer camps are everybody's favorite. 
they we do 27 ish summer camps here every every summer i mean it is intense it's the biggest part of our revenue we don't know how that's going to go this year so we're working on virtual summer camps for you guys. So we have the we already have the supplies for our summer camps here this year. So we're going to we're working on ways to package up the supplies that we can get out to you guys and you guys can work along with us. We have dollhouse camps, we have puppy and kitty camps, we have stuff like that. We're working to build some of those individual classes that you guys can do too. That will be built into the membership site, but it won't be part of the membership. Those will be individual classes. So if you're not one of those people that wants six to eight classes every month, you just want you know to take a fun camp or something, you'll have options like that too. We're trying to build it out for everybody. So you guys have so many options, lots of things you can do. Maybe we'll have date nights, who knows what we'll have, but we're building it all together just as really a service for you guys. So don't think, I just really want you guys to know that this is not just like, a bait and switch. I feel like a lot of people have been, you know, concerned that we were going to pull um, the the content off just to put it on our on our membership site. That is not the case at all. And I want to reassure you, we love you guys. Everything we've given for free has totally been for free. And we're just happy to be on this journey for, with you. So hopefully you guys all have some sticky stuff to apply to your canvas for today. And we're going to go ahead and get started. Who do we have with us today, miss? We have uh, Lisa from Indiana. Hi, guys. Tammy and Maddie from Maryland. Hello. We have Jane from Pennsylvania. Jacob and Caleb and Bennett from Baltimore. Hey, guys. Katie and Jake from Pennsylvania. Jess from Massachusetts. Awesome. Hey, guys. We have Donna from Indiana. Hello, um, Donna. Michelle says hi. Hey, Michelle. We've got friends tuning in from California. Hey, California and friends. Or Pennsylvania. Lots of Pennsylvania today. Yeah, lots, so many opportunity for people to say hi. So Hello. Yeah, got, uh, we did Sean's talk for a little bit. Sean's trying to say hi to everybody in text. <laughs> yeah, so, thank you, Sean. Time. We appreciate you so much out there, Sean, the other half, half of Happy Groundhog. He's, <laughs> he's my happy typer, and he... He um, knows how I would respond to most things, so he's out there giving you guys a little bit of love, and um, yeah, we're all just working together. So and one fun thing, I yeah. think uh, Easter Bunny delivered a lot of Happy Groundhogs. The Easter, Easter Bunny animals. did. Oh my gosh! So, yes. How much they yes, the Easter Bunny made a special trip to Missy mm -hmm. and Sean's studio, and he picked up so much stuff; it was unbelievable. <laughs> I know our family got four things. I had a picture um, planned to give to you guys, but I'll. I'll throw that up tomorrow. All four of my kids got happy groundhog animals in their Easter baskets. So we would love to see how many you guys got. Make sure to tag them on Instagram or Facebook, um, the Happy Groundhog Studio. We want to see those really cute guys. That's where Manny's from, our sweet <laughs> Manny. So yeah, definitely be sure to share those. We love to see the joy those bring. That's why Missy and Sean do this. They love to see kids smile when they are loving on animals that are from garments kept out of landfills. It's just such a cool thing. So so um, we're really excited to see what everybody, um, you know, did with those sweet little guys they might have gotten. But yeah, today we are, um, we are back and ready for more fun. I hope everybody had a great weekend. We had a great weekend and we are going to paint some stuff today. So today's is really going to be a really loose, easy, fun project. We are going to um, just kind of make a fun abstract painting. So abstract means... There's not really any realistic theme to this, okay? Abstract means whatever you're feeling, whatever you want. So for these projects, you can choose colors that represent how you're feeling. Or we can start to like make some shapes of how you're feeling. If you're feeling really organic, maybe you tear your tape and you make just cool little, you know, negative spaces with some torn tape. If you are feeling really like excited, maybe you make like a, a zigzaggy blast in the middle of your... Uh, canvas. Just express yourself with the negative space that we're going to use. So would you like to use tape or would you like to use some of these stickers? What do you think you're going to use today? Tape. Some tape? Okay. I'm going to use some washi tape. She's going to use masking tape. The only difference between washi tape and masking tape is really masking tape's a little stickier and a little thicker. So if you have trouble getting washi tape to stick down, sometimes doubling it up, having two pieces side by side helps. Um, if it's too thick and you want thinner pieces, you can always cut washi tape in half. I'm just going to start laying some stuff down. So I'm going to take a little bit of tape and I'm just going to go across here 
and tear it. So I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna scrub this down because the firmer that our tape is adhered to this canvas, it's gonna leave less space for that tape to seep underneath, okay? So if it's if it's laid down here, we're not gonna be able, this, the paint won't be able to get up under that tape. Um, Nikki wants to know, the, I'm guessing the blue painter's tape, which would be Blue perfect. painter's tape is perfect. It's just really expensive um, for me. So I just, I never think to say it because I never have it. Um, but blue painter's tape is literally what this is made for. So yes, if you have painter's tape, it's a perfect, perfect resource tool. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna start making some like geometric, uh, shapes in here. I'm going to go and, and make some things that look kind of like diamonds or whatever. But yeah, Nikki, use that painter's tape. That stuff's great. I've been waiting to see if they ever come out with it at the Dollar Tree. That's Tom's favorite store. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> he loves a Dollar Tree. Me too. Aubrey loves a Dollar Tree too. Hey, your dollar goes quite a ways. And I wanted you to know you've gotten a lot of great feedback about the subscription. People were excited Yay! that you clarified and people are also really excited to get started with it. Good, yeah. You know, and as I'm going through this, guys, sometimes I don't give all the information I need to, and I'm so sorry. I just don't think about it until you guys ask. So the questions you ask are really helpful. Um, some I know my Facebook, when you guys send me questions on Facebook, it says I don't respond to the messages doesn't mean I don't read them. Sometimes I read them. Um, sometimes I go through and catch up on those. Um, but Facebook is so accessible. A lot of people ask questions that I'm going to answer in the middle of our of our lives and stuff. So I don't answer all those on there. But it is, um, they're definitely questions that I try to get to when we're able to talk to you guys. So yeah, I'm glad that helped. But yeah, I don't ever want you guys to think that I was, you know, taking anything away. I'm just adding more. Just giving you more ways, more ways to play. Got a lot of washi tape fans. That's, I love. Yeah. That's Tabitha she loves a, washi oh, tape. She has a whole bucket full. Of I'm a washi a tape hoarder. People <laughs> got washi tape in their Easter basket. Yes. Yeah, I saw that. I love yes. washi tape too. Washi tape is a very underrated craft supply. I use it in card making. I use it in my planner. I'm one of those weird people that really like to like decorate my planner. It's like kind of therapeutic for me. If I'm going to put all this junk in there, that's some stuff I don't really want to do. Let's put a little washi tape border around it and make you feel better about it. Oh, quick thing. Somebody puts, will duct tape work out? Duct tape's I mean, duct a little tape, harsh. Duct tape will work, but it has a lot of that residue on it. So, um, it, it could potentially rip your canvas. Duct tape is so strong, it would work, but I wouldn't push it down as hard as you will. Like with this washi tape and stuff, you're gonna kinda wanna grind it down there and make sure it, it makes those seams um, really adhere. Duct tape, just be gentle. Use a gentle hand with it. Okay, so I'm just, guys, I'm just making like a little, you know, cool little sections here, just little geometric sections. And I'm just kind of roping some of it off and... I'm just doing weird shit. Yeah, I think that's perfect. So these are very abstract. And I'm gonna show you guys some more ways to kind of add on to these too, if just a straight abstract painting isn't, doesn't do much for your soul. I'm gonna show you some ways to maybe turn it into more of like a mixed media piece too, because I am a fan of the mixed media. <laughs> so yeah, use what you've got. Maybe just adjust it a little bit, you know? I think I'm done. Cool. And then if you have different widths of washi tape, if you have like a thin one and a thick one, you can alternate that through there too. That would be really cool. And I'm just lining some of this up and making spots on here. Washi tape does have a tendency to come back up. So you might want to keep rubbing those down until, until we're ready to paint some, I mean, depending on the brand, I buy some cheap washi tape sometimes just cause they're cute patterns and they're fun and they're in a clearance bin somewhere. You have other friends out there that also like to decorate their planners and yes. decorate uh, postcards with them. I love postcards. That's so cute. 
I like decorating cards and planners and um, I use it in like just a lot of random um, if you get packages from us a lot of times <clears throat> pardon me a lot of times I've used washi tape to put your tissue together um, you know it's just it's like tape but cute and if there's anything that I can make cute that's where I go with it it's extra you know Aubrey says I'm extra. She is. <laughs> Aubrey's always like, you're extra. Pretty extra. You add a lot of things. I do. I do add like, a lot of things. She has flower tape. I mean, <laughs> well, why not? Like mother, like daughter. <laughs> yeah, Aubrey, you're pretty extra too. <laughs> I know. Aubrey's pretty. Aubrey's pretty extra. All right. So I think I've covered this guy up about as much as I want to. Um, everybody is pretty adhered. Everything looks nice and smooth. I feel good about it. You feel good about yours? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put some paint in our basin. Do you have brushes, babe? You want some oh, brushes? No. Yeah. There you go. We need a small brush and a large brush. And then... I'll throw a little detail brush out there for you in case you Oh, want to we do have anything. Misty Chaser. Is that, I guess, yeah, she just put water on her canvas and the tape won't stick. Oh, so just... yeah. I'm sorry. I forgot to mention that. I usually have you moisten yeah. your canvas <laughs> for acrylic. Yep. Not this time. I should have mentioned that. Um, yeah, that today we're not moistening our canvases. If you have an extra canvas that's not moistened, um, if you have another one out of the package, run and grab that one and stick tape to it, and then you can use the you can use the other canvas for another painting, or make another one later. A dried piece of paint dropped in my. Oh, that's okay. It's okay. Just sit it to the side. Yeah, sorry about that, Misty. I forgot to mention we're not today. We're not moistening first. That's a good. That's a good thing to note. Sometimes I forget that um, your brain is not on the same track that mine is, and you're just, you know, you're, you're going through with me, so yeah. But you're so smart for knowing to moisten your canvas. I'm glad that you um, picked up on that from all the other lessons. All right, so I'm going to throw some paint in here. Maybe I'm going to stay in green and blue territory for some of it. I don't know. Maybe I'll put all the colors. Who knows? Yeah. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> Just can't resist. Everybody loves a party. Everybody <laughs> loves a party paint tube. All right. I've got my colors, I think. I'm going with just some greens and blues and turquoise, purple, yellow. Just, whatever colors you like. Again, this is abstract. It's whatever colors you like. I'm just doing pastel colors. Yeah, pastels are good too. So I am going to wet my brush. Not my canvas, just my brush in my water basin and I'm going to just paint these sections okay um, this one let's we could do just a solid turquoise up here in this guy let him dry a little bit and we can come back and do some details over top okay there's that one I'm not even gonna clean my brush I'm just gonna dip right into this green and this one, I'm gonna paint this guy. Maybe I'm gonna paint him, you know, mostly green. And then let's say I kind of fade over to this turquoisey. So when I'm fading colors, I'm gonna kind of run them together, all right? I'm gonna go back and forth between the two colors and kind of blend them together. So start with my green and then go to my turquoise and kind of blend them back together and that creates that smooth gradient between the two and if I feel like I kind of overdid it on the green I can add some of that turquoise back in over on this side and kind of fade it again that's just one you guys don't need to do this I'm just showing you guys some cool things you can do within these 
sections of your painting, okay? Um, let's see, maybe I want to go, this one I'll say maybe he's green up here, and then I wanna do some yellow down here, and then fade a green to yellow. So again, I'm just gonna go back and forth. Cool thing is, you don't really have to worry about staying in the lines because your tape is your line. You can just go over it and back and forth all you want. People are talking about the things that they've been doing with all their paintings and all yeah. their work. Yeah, let's hear it. Looking for different ideas. Looking for ideas for yes. things to do. Um, Cause one so, person said, uh, I obviously can't buy frames for all of these canvases. So mixed media guys, I'm going to have some ways, um, for you guys to incorporate these things. We'll do some, um, talks about it. Um, but on the membership one, I really like multi-step projects and I like to do mixed media stuff. Um, but real, so we'll dive deeper into it there. So that may be something that you want to, you know, check out there. If it's something that you really want to dive deep into ways to incorporate your pieces of art into new pieces of art. I love to take pieces of an old piece that didn't really like stir my soul. I didn't want to frame it. It wasn't gallery worthy, um, ways to incorporate that into a new piece. I like to do that, but, um, some things that you can do just real quickly, um, Today I'm gonna to show you as we go through this piece um, how you could take something and incorporate it into another piece too. So that's an option for you. Um, just follow along till the end, stay at the end and watch what we kind of do to add pieces together. Um, that would be like taking the focal point of one piece and throwing it in there. Um, you can always take the extra pieces that you have and kind of do one big like collage too. You could take pieces um, multiple, you know, framed pieces and kind of overlap them and do like a shadow box canvas. If you have the canvas panels, um, you could do like a shadow box canvas and kind of overlap them together and have like one big cool collaborative piece for like 2020. We have um, those really cool little like strings with the clips on them and we alternate pieces out. So we'll have like, you know, the the clips holding different artworks that the kids have done or that I've done that we have together. And we kind of like sometimes alternate those things out. Um, you know, and the ones that you want to save that you don't want to hang. I like those little storage tubs, those little 12 by 12 um, craft organizers that you can get at the hobby store or um, like Rubbermaid tubs or something like that to store it in so that the, the dust or like mice, we get mice here in Ohio a lot. Um, and that so they don't get into the artwork and stuff like that make sure you have a lid on it but i'm i'm going to show you some ways today at the end of this particular painting part that you can um ways that you can incorporate old works into new works all right so some of the fun stuff people are doing they're they've made entire walls of their basements now galleries yes <laughs> entire walls of their garages galleries yeah there are people that are doing gallery shows after this is um after this covid social distancing is behind us um people that are going to have art shows and invite their friends and family to see all their art i hope that you guys seriously FaceTime me and Missy. We would love to see <laughs> yeah. these. We would love to be part of your gallery opening. You can, yeah. We will give you our personal number to FaceTime us to see it. I would love to. So yeah, those are fun. What else? Anything else that we that I didn't hear about yet? Um, Sarah said they took um, their watercolor resist and she made 18 different bookmarks and something oh, else to friends. So sweet. Cool. So sweet, guys. You guys are so smart. I have no doubt that you guys are always going to come up with really cool ways to do this. Connie said that her daughter-in-law is keeping all the projects together, and they're going to put them in a time capsule. Oh. Mark the quarantine. I love it. I love it. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's a ton of ways to display art. And sometimes, you know... I know the nursing homes are not wanting to get a lot of like some of them are not wanting to get a lot of mail directly from people right now because spreading germs or whatever but I know that you could um you know after this is over and you know we can kind of say that I don't know that it'll ever be over so let's just say that but I after we can you know give like tangible things a little bit easier maybe you could give it to somebody else you share your art there are um 
art abandonment movements. If you go, um, if you look on Facebook, there is an art abandonment page. And that basically means you just make art and you give it, you leave it out for somebody to find. So you wouldn't want to leave it out in the weather if it's something that's like a canvas that could be damaged. You could put it like in a plastic bag or something and you put like a cute little art abandonment note on the front of it. That's a fun Facebook page. Check that one out. I think it might be on Instagram too, but art abandonment is a cool movement where you just make art and then you give it away. Like kind of like the kindness rocks where people find them, like take one, leave one, stuff like that. So that's another cool option too. So yeah. So I'm still just painting. I'm just filling these little, filling these in with some colors. I'm kind of, you know, moving the color between them. Some of them I'm doing, you know, mixed colors together. I'm going to come back over and do some cool stuff on top of these once they're a little bit more dry. I'm just going to kind of fade these a little bit into each other for now. And you could do it real chunky. You don't have to be a nice gradient. You could do, some are just going to be chunky. Some are going to be. Oh, Lisa said when she goes back to work, she's going to take the paintings and hang them in her office. Yes, I That's love that. Yeah. That is such a good idea. I like the time capsule idea. I love the time capsule idea. We'll have to do something like that. I want to do that. I did um, time capsules for them for their first and fifth birthdays. Everybody filled out little um, little yeah. cards. Yeah, you just don't remember. But um, everybody filled out cards of why they were at their birthday party, like how, how do I know you and things like that. And they'll get that on graduation and stuff. So this could be a really fun thing to use, you know, for graduation gifts you know, in their time capsule later or, you know, grandparents gifts or anything like that. I think it's super sweet. I think art is like any piece of art that somebody sends me, like a card. Oh my goodness. And some of you guys, the cards you guys sent, oh my gosh, we got cards over the weekend that were so sweet. We got, well, at the end of last week that were just so sweet. And some of you guys used your marbled paper to send me cards. Oh my gosh, make me cry in the middle of, in the middle of my driveway. So sweet. But yeah, send art. Send art to people. I'm all about it. I think I'm going to make a Corona time capsule. A corona time capsule? A yeah. Corona capsule. Corona capsule. You going to hashtag that? Mm -hmm. Hashtag Corona capsule? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm still spreading out some of this paint. Somebody mentioned your library, your art library, but that would be a good thing to do. You could do, yeah. people put books in. Yeah. You could, you could put your art in, people could trade yeah. art um, Geocaching yeah, is such a fun <laughs> thing that we do. Um, geocaching is where you go out and you find something that's hidden. Um, it's like a scavenger hunt, but we put little art things in geocache when we find they're usually like a pencil box or some kind of little container and you take something or leave something you like sign the log and say like when your family was there and you put a little trinket or something in the box and if there's like if it's a leave one take one like somebody may have left a hot wheel and we leave a little polymer clay turtle or something we made instead but um those are super cool too small things that you make can go in like little geocache box so a lot of times they're at like parks and things like that. I don't know that those are a great thing to do while we're social distancing, but um, after that's over, you know, plastic things, I wouldn't be messing around with a lot right now. But after, um, you know, save your smaller things and you can geocache with those too. It's like a fun built-in all-in-one scavenger hunt. One time we were at Miami Meadows and we found one and it was like a little Gatorade bottle. Yeah, that one was and it was, like, all wet, so we had to, like, try as hard as we could to write. To sign the log, yeah. To sign the log, and we put, um, there was nothing in there, but we put little sticker gems. Yeah, I mean, they're just, they're fun little things. May not be a great idea for the moment, but you can do them with them later. You know, just hang on to it and find something fun to do with it. I'm not a big fan of throwing art away. Um, you can, you know, you can do something with it, incorporate it into something, Aubrey was going through her sketchbook and having a, a little meltdown the other night about some of her art that was not up to her current standards. And uh, 
What do we talk about that? I mean, what do we say? Why do we leave? Why do we leave that stuff in our sketchbook? We don't tear it out. Why do we leave it in there? Just in case, like you want to come back to it. And you can come back to it and work on it later, or um, maybe you um want to do something different with it. Yeah, and to see how much we've grown, right? It's great to look back. I mean. I know a lot of people do those things on the door frame where you measure your height. Sketchbooks are a visual representation of how much you've grown. I mean, I think they're invaluable as far as, you know, learning, you know, looking back and seeing like, wow, look how much progress I've made. So yeah, they're definitely, um, they're definitely worth keeping. I still have my stuff that I did in high school and college. Well, some of it. Not all of it. Some of it. What about you, Miss? Do you have stuff that you did in college? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. It's fun. I think I'm done. We have a lot of the old paintings hanging up in the basement. <laughs> yeah? I used to paint paintings of stuffed animals. Yes. Yeah. yeah. This, are toys. you sensing a theme here? <laughs> she used to paint stuffed animals and toys. Yeah. Um... I mean, I, I don't ever throw art away. I just, you know, I re, I, I box it up and change things out, but I don't ever really throw it away. I'm a little sentimental about art, I guess. Yeah, we turned one of our like big cabinets in our living or in our kitchen into a gallery. That's awesome. So we switched, like we switched that out. Yeah. It's a little bigger space than the fridge is. Is that the one where like the vintage stuff is? Is that, did I miss that in your kitchen? Well, it's to the left of the refrigerator. I have like a big kind of pantry cabinet that we added. Okay. And it's got a big blank space on the front. So we switch out the. Oh, cool. The kids artwork on there. Yeah, we have a, we have a hanger, like a, a big um, thing with clips on it. And we've got like the line with clips that you can put things in. All right. So some of these spots that I am going through are complete. They're, I've just thrown some paint down. I'm going to talk about some things we can do with these. Um, we can kind of, we could go in and we could take a white. Do you have white? Oh, yeah, you do. So we could take some white. That looks great, Brie. Did nice. We could do some, uh, you know, shading on these. So I could take a little bit of white and I could buff off a little bit of my white on my paper. Okay. Just buff off a little bit of it. And then go on to the dry spots and kind of dry brush a little bit of white just to make it look, you know, fuzzy there. So you could add some texture that way. I could let me paint my brush or paint my brush, wash my brush. You could um, go in through these and you could even, let's say, you know, I want to paint some lines through these. Paint some, paint some lines, do some X's. Some random, you know, just some random details, whatever. Whatever I feel like doing through there. Um, let's see, this one, maybe I take some white and I just do some little spirals through it. Julie said her kids submitted their artwork that they've made with us to um, an, uh, on, an art contest in a magazine. Oh, really? Yeah. That's super cool. Julie, if you know the name of that magazine that you want to share. Monthly Electric Company magazine. Huh. I don't know if it's the Electric Company show or like their electric provider. But Oh, their yeah. local I don't know. utilities. It's monthly maybe. Electric Company magazine. Oh, cool. So yeah, I'm sure there are art contests. I'm sure there are more than normal now. So I'm just doing some little spirals through here. People keep asking when you take the tape off. <laughs> <laughs> once once it's a little bit once it's a little more dry. Okay. So if you are all completely finished with your with everything you want to do to it, if you don't want to do any details or anything like that, just let it dry for a minute. Let it dry until it's not seepy, you know. I'm doing some more um just some more detail stuff on top of here. I'm gonna do this one with some spirals and show you guys kind of that detail on it really makes it pop because then it's not just, you know, 
a couple blocks. But if a couple blocks minimalistic is what you really like and that's what you're going for, that's awesome. That's just not necessarily what I'm going for on this project. Also, another cool thing that you can do is you can do some splatters. Now, this one's a little messy. Let's make sure that we have aprons on ourselves and aprons on our uh, covered work surface. But um, I like to take a, a dry brush, okay? Like a thick dry brush. Um, and Tom, are you overhead right now? So this one, you can see it's a, it's a firm brush and it has thick bristles and it's like a flat brush. I really like to be able to just pull this back and I'm gonna pull and flip the paint a little bit onto my canvas, okay? So kids, this one is one that you want to have permission to do. Um, here, I just take a little bit of that paint and you can see how much paint is on the top of my brush. All right, and I'm gonna take it, and my finger's gonna get messy while I do this. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna pull it back, kind of like a rubber band, like a slingshot, and then I just kind of let those bristles go. And it makes really fun little splatters, okay? And you can kind of see how light those splatters are if you do it lightly. Um, and then I could take my white and do the same thing. Go back in and splatter. You know, that gives you teeny tiny little flicks of it. You can use a really old nasty toothbrush, not one you use on your pretty little grill these days, but an old nasty toothbrush, maybe one that you use for working with clay. Um, if, you were, if you like to work with clay, you usually want to keep a dirty little a dirty little paintbrush um, that you can use for clay to kind of help score things and attach things and that this is a perfect time to use that dirty little toothbrush. Um, toothbrush will do the same thing with those splatters. So let me show you on another brush. Let's see if I have a smaller brush. If I have a teeny tiny brush like this guy, like you guys may have a little small brush, I can do the same thing. I just want to dip it in my paint a little bit more, okay? And my finger's gonna get more messy this time, but you've got your little, you're coated with paint, and then you wanna kind of pull it back and kind of- It's not really working, because this one's not firm. You're too wet. You're definitely too wet. You wanna use a drier brush, completely dried out. So you would can dry- Can a different brush? Yeah, let me get you one. Missy's gotcha. So take that and then you're just going to flick it again. And then you can dip into another color and kind of throw those over there. Now, if your brush, if you've got too much paint on your brush, like I did for that one, it's not going to flip very well. Okay. It's just too heavy and it's just going to glob down. So you're going to have to really play with it and work with it and see how much paint that brush can stand. The firmer the bristles, the better it's going to work. So this particular brush, um, this bigger guy that I have, he's the best one for the job. Um, that one, yeah, that's a good one too. So you got it. You're going. Um, Looks like people have now added fingerprints with your Fingerprints <laughs> are perfect too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now they got paint on their fingers. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, you know, you can just kind of go around and flip those. That's a little Jackson Pollock kind of uh, look to it. He's a famous artist that you might like to look up if you like, um, you know, if you like the splattery look of things. So yeah, just kind of pull it back like a rubber band, like, like you're, we do this with um, galaxy paintings too. When we do galaxy paintings here in the studio, we do... Um, a lot of paint flicking with ugly little toothbrushes and lots of little, lots of little tiny uh, splatters. This is one of the fun things. People love to splatter paint. I think it looks really cool. It does look very cool. And you can go back over layer after layer, you know, lights and brights and fun things like that. And the more you get going, once that paint starts to thin out, you get teeny tiny little speckles. And you can really build some value in there that way. So you can take about half that paint off. And then if you leave the paint on that you've been using, it's all gonna blend together. So like on this blue that I'm doing now, it's mixing with my greens and whites that I've already had on there. So lots of fun that way. You just kind of, you know, you're kind of flicking and just like petting these bristles really hard. Okay, so that's a fun way to do it too.
I like, I like that. baby's Everybody pet got dog. Quiet, we got lots of love. Yes, so I think Hearts you guys and like. Wows and likes and I all think that. you guys probably <laughs> like <laughs> flicking the paint. Everybody around here tends to love that. Aubrey, I'm going to steal a stack of your little, you know, paper towels. That's the word I'm looking for. I had it really hard, like how a baby pets a dog. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> similar. How a toddler pets a dog. That makes sense. All right, so here's what we can do. We can sit this back to the side for a second. And what you would do when you're all finished is really you would wait and let this dry, okay? You would let this dry to get to where you can peel that tape off and it's not going to take everything that you just did that you know it's not going to be real wet and seepy onto the nice barriers that you just made those lines so i'm going to sit this guy back here for a second and we're going to talk about some things that you could do with a painting that's all finished aubrey yours is like yours is beautiful yours is the 90s i i hope it which is now again right for those of us that um you know aubrey's is the 90s it's basically what we're uh you know, back into Visco girl stuff, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm going to take this brush and clean it for her real quick. This is one of my favorite brushes, so she's going to ruin it if I don't clean it real quick. So bear with me. Um, always wash your brushes as soon as you're done. If you don't wash your brushes as soon as you're done, that paint is going to sit on there and it's going to eat those bristles. Especially if you have natural bristles, um, it really will just destroy them. So... You really want to use, I use on the bottom of my basin, it has some little bumpy lines that go back and forth. You could throw a piece of an old sponge in there or something, just something to kind of agitate that paint a little bit. And then um, you want to dry your bristles too. And you want to make sure that your little bristles are standing back up because he's going to have a bad hair day if you don't. And we do not, we always joke about our brushes with bad hair days here. You want to really just get in there and get a majority of the water off of them and let them stand back up. I use brush conditioner like once a week on my brushes. Um, you want to get all that paint out of the hilt here. You definitely don't want to leave anything dry in there. That'll kind of break down those bristles. So we'll just do a quick brush washing tutorial on those. Some of, you know, some of the brushes um, have, with lighter bristles, they're going to stain. And a stain is not the worst thing that could happen to your brushes. Stains aren't bad. It's when you um, let them stay wet and if you don't ever leave them down in the basin setting down in the basin is like it's gonna make him just be like you know done bad hair day so um our brushes are clean they're good they're ready to go you can leave them sitting on their side but definitely don't leave them down face down or sitting down in the water okay anywho sidetracked derailed for a moment all right, so on top of these cool paintings that we do, like I said, maybe just a cool abstract painting that you have nice bright lines isn't enough for you. Maybe you want to add something to it. So you could take an old work of art. You could grab one of, um, one of you want to grab one of my little watercolor guys, my watercolor monsters? Um, you could take one of your little pieces that we did like a watercolor monster or um, your still life or something like that and you could cut it out and you could put it right on top of this piece okay and then it could be like essentially a background for your piece it would be more like um, mixed media so for me I could throw my little monsters on here all five of my little monsters and I could have them on this cool background and that could be a way to put these cool little guys that I cut out that I didn't really know what to do with that could be their new home. So that's a way to incorporate multiple works of art together into one. You could cut out, you know, you can even take that canvas off those stretcher boards and you could cut out your bunny's head and your chick and put them on here. You could cut out, you know, pieces of another project that you've done. What you could also do, um, what we like to do, you could print out a picture of your family or, you know, yourself or whatever, and you could cut that out and you could mount that on the actual canvas itself and it could be kind of like um you know a mixed media piece too um tom do you have my do you know where my luna picture is that's a good example of how to do that i think it's over in the stack um <clears throat> so you can do that 
And then Aubrey and I, we like to take pictures of other animals too. So, or even the sloth painting, Luna or the sloth, either one. But she has a pangolin and I have this little cat and we can take these, we can take these uh, colored pencils or you can use markers or crayons or whatever and you can um, color those in. And then you have two works of art. So a colored in picture or something that you did, maybe you did the chick or whatever. Um, and you can put that right on top of the actual piece. So Aubrey wants to do a pangolin that she's gonna mount to the top of her piece once it's dry. So she's gonna work on coloring that in with colored pencils. Um, this is another example of one of the things we do around here, like a mixed media canvas class. So this is just a picture of my dog Luna. And she is basically cut out on a really nice eight by 10 um, black and white. And then we've mounted that to on top of an acrylic painting. This is way more of a process. This is like a four part class, but this process of mounting a photograph over top of an acrylic painting is really fun and it's a great way to jazz up what you're working with. So um, with Luna, she was black and white and I used some watercolor um, crayons actually and colored her in, but you could use watercolor paint or whatever. And those are super fun ways to add that together as well. So if you wanted to take, you know, this cat and you wanted to color it in and then cut it out, you could mount that right onto the bottom or the middle or the top of your canvas once it's all said and done. So that is um, a really cool way to do that. Add on, you know, your little monsters, whatever you want to do. You could do lots of things. You could have somebody print out a cat and, you know, color that cat and then throw one of your monsters by it. And you could take like all of one week's work and be like, this is my painting for, you know, week three, all of our, all of my week three projects. If, you know, if you don't want to keep all of it or you don't have space to keep all of it, you can do that too. So I think we're close enough to where we can start to take this tape off. And I'm going to show you the magic, the oohs and ahs of tape, taking the tape off. It's so satisfying. It is satisfying. I agree with that statement. So you just want to start at one of the edges and start pulling the tape off. And you can see that some of the tape, it's still a little wet. So you want to make sure you don't just drop it right back on the canvas and plop onto your white area. But you know, you'll get nice areas that the whole thing comes right off for you. And you will see some spots where it's seepy through. Um, where you don't have great, stark, very crisp lines. You'll have spots like that little guy. He's he's splotchy, and that's okay. This one's kind of splotchy. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have ones that are splotchy. How you avoid that, um, some of you that out there may have a Cricut or something like that or, you know, a Silhouette machine, and you've ever done stenciling, the trick for that, if you want to make really crisp lines and you don't want any seepage through at all, you would use um, Mod Podge to seal in whatever you're doing. It wouldn't be as quick of a process. So you could take, or you could even take white paint too. You could prime it with white paint. Um, sometimes I find that with white paint, it sticks a little bit and it'll rip up those edges that I'm trying to do. But I like Mod Podge if you have some. I will go in and I'll take whatever stencil or whatever, um, whatever piece of tape that I'm using and I will lay all that down first. So I'll have it all lined out, the grid, all of it. And then I will Mod Podge over it because that seals those edges. So the tape isn't, the tape just isn't sticking enough to the canvas in that spot where I've got that going on. And that's really what causes those little bits of paint to get up, up underneath them. So if you do a nice layer of Mod Podge down, it'll, cre it'll create a barrier um, so that when you rip that up, you're ripping up just the tape and that little layer of Mod Podge that filled it is staying down on the canvas still. So that, that's a helpful tip too if you really want super nice crisp lines. It's just more labor intensive and that's not what we're going for with little kids here. This is more just like a fun, you know, a fun abstract piece. But if you want to do it yourself and you want to spell, write your name out on there and you really want the lines to be crisp, that is how you're going, that's how you're going to do that. 
Um, Mod Podge is great. You could use white, you know, like a white gouache or gesso on your canvas too. Uh, that'll work as well. Something that's going to be more dry and not a super shiny like a, like acrylic. The higher the glosses, the higher the chances you have of when you lift that tape, it kind of fraying into the piece and you tearing off some of your actual um, acrylic. Yeah, are you okay over there? <laughs> she's just, she's busy. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed that part. Um, you wind up with a really cool, you know, piece that looks kind of like a stained glass window. It looks a little bit mosaic. It's kind of fun. You can throw, you know, you can throw other pieces on there. You could throw, you know, another image, a picture, anything, whatever you like. You know, cut your little cat out and throw him down on the bottom corner. Um, you know, hang a fun sloth from the top. I have another mixed media piece that has a, a sloth hanging from the top. But it's just a fun way to um, make something that's super relaxing. You don't have to have any, you know, real strict guidelines of what you're doing. It's very abstract. You can do as much or as little in these cool little pieces as you want. It doesn't have to be, um, it doesn't, it's very open-ended. So you can do lots of fun stuff with it. Write your name out in tape, try it again. So this is a fun one that we do with lots of, uh, lots of ages, lots of different styles. Uh, again, back to that like Cricut and Silhouette machine. I know so many people have those and they're intimidated by them. They just sit there kind of collecting dust. This is a perfect opportunity to use those. Just make a letter, a monogram. If your kid's first name is Kate, do a K and then they can paint everything around it. We've done some fun little galaxy ones and things like that here at the studio where we use their first initial and then we paint a galaxy around it and we use that, you know, that flipping um, paint splatter technique. So yeah, you can, you know, print out their favorite superhero. That's another birthday party here we do at the studio where we do a variety of superheroes that are um, on, you know, the superhero vinyl pieces that are cut out and then they paint everything around the superhero and it'll have like a silhouette of their little, you know, Captain America's shield and stuff like that. And those are fun. But again, those are ones that we will Mod Podge down so you get those really nice crisp lines. If you do the Mod Podge, you want to let it dry for a few hours before you paint on top of it. So Put your, you know, your tape or your vinyl cutout or whatever you want, a big sticker, and you want those crisp lines, brush your Mod Podge over it, and then let it rest for a couple hours. You don't have to brush the entire canvas. You just have to brush the edges of what you want to seal down, okay? So those are some next steps for these. If you guys like, like this process and want to do a couple two you know, some two-part things, some mixed media things like that. Those are some ways to incorporate some other works of art or some other fun things into it. So I can't wait to see what you made. Use that hashtag made with Mick Harper and we will share some of the ones that we loved and saw today. We are going to give away some prizes now. I hope y'all want some prizes because we have some prizes to give. I'm going to make sure I have nothing. They do. You guys want some prizes? <laughs> Very exciting. All right, yay. So we have a couple things today. First, we will start. We will start with everybody's favorite. Everybody's always so, so into whatever the stuffy of the week is. I get it. I'm into them too. Happy Groundhog makes the happiest stuffies you've ever seen in your life. So I understand. I feel you. I wish I could win. Can I draw myself? Do you think do you think I could I can win my own prizes? Is that it's not a good idea. No. No. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I don't win the cloud this week. Who wins the cloud <laughs> this week is G. A. Freckles. Georgia Freckles is what I assume that it is. It is the sweetest girl that does art with her grandparents with us every single day. I love seeing your art, and your grandpa is a hoot. So <laughs> you win this sweet stuffy from Missy and Sean, the happy cloud, okay? So we'll get that out to you. If you can, um, send us a message with your address. Um, if not, we'll, we'll find you and reach out to you too. But if you're watching today with your grandparents, shoot us your address. We're going to get this guy out to you. Um, the next prize for today is the Future World Changer shirt. This one is appropriate for guys and gals. It's like a, a rusty, a rusty, uh, you know, mauve color. This one is going to Zava La Chad 9. Z A V A La Chad 9. Um, they made 
I don't know if it's a, a guy or a gal, but they made some awesome sock puppets and a big backdrop for them. And it just, it was super, super cool to see. So that is that one. And then, guys, I have a bonus. I have a, uh, I have a bonus this, this week. Because this one, like, warmed my heart. Super big time. I have a shirt. I have a Mr. Rogers shirt for a dad. Um, and this one I saw this morning. Okay, this is my... Mr. Rogers shirt says, imagine our real what our real neighborhoods would be like if each of us offered, as a matter of course, just one kind word to another person. Mr. Fred Rogers, he's like a national treasure. He was. That man's amazing. So this dad warmed my heart. The caption on this photo I saw this morning was, Apparently, the dad's name is Jeffrey. He was more scared of painting with his kids than he was of COVID-19. And you know what? Bethany Harshaw, Bash, I can't, I, you know. Beth, Harshaw Bantle? Bethany Harshaw Bantle. I commented on your picture this morning because I loved it so much. Your dad, or the dad, her husband, sat down and made these paintings with these kids. He got outside of his comfort zone, guys. He, um, you know, he made these paintings with his kids and he got outside of his comfort zone and he did big things. So I'm sending him a shirt because you know what? That's awesome. I love when you guys step outside your comfort zones and you do new things and you do big things and you just create when you don't feel like a creator. We're all creators. We were, every single one of us was made to create and that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here sharing all of this with you. So you blew my mind this morning, Miss Bethany and Mr. Jeffrey. You guys rock and I wanted to send a shirt to you guys too. So reach out to me, um, send me your address. I will reach out to you too if I don't hear from you today. Um, I just want you guys to enjoy creating. Even if creating is not your thing, I love that you guys are giving it a try. I love so many people are hanging with us every single day. It blows my mind. We're going to let that one slide. So, <laughs> thanks for hanging with us. Do we have any other questions out there, Miss? They want to know if there's going to be a giveaway this week. Oh my gosh, there is. You guys, I'm getting it. I'm already lost. All right. <laughs> this week's giveaway is going to be a fun one. First... Tom, do you have a picture of Missy, the happy groundhog, happy yes. cat? We are going to be giving away. Missy and Sean are donating a happy cat to give away. Sweet, sweet happy cat. That is this week's stuffy winner. And you guys can win these by using that hashtag made with McHarper on Facebook and Instagram. We choose, we choose our winner from both platforms. Okay. Um, this week, McCarper Manor, we will be giving away, um, we will be giving away a shirt of your choice from these our bear family lines. So we do little bear, and these go the little bears, baby bears. Um, they go from ages, you know, newborn all the way up to, all the way up to big big kids. Um, we have that one. We have the little bear. We have Papa Bear. Okay. Papa bears represent, Jeffrey, maybe I should have sent you a Papa bear. If you'd rather a Papa bear than the Mr. Rogers, let me know. I'll send you one of those instead. All right, so Papa bears and then Mama bears. You know we didn't forget about you. Mama bears. We have Mama. I wear this like at least once a week. Um, we have a Mama bear. So you guys will get to pick which, which bear you would like from the bear family. Um, our winner will get one of the family bears, um, who knows? Maybe I'll love a, a mom and a kid or a dad and a kid so much that both people will get a bear. You never know with me. It's crazy. I like to give stuff away. So <laughs> that's what we're going to do this week. Keep using those hashtags made with McHarper. It's so fun. It brightens up our evenings. I sit and scroll. I, I can't respond to every single one of them, but gosh, if I don't try, you know, um, we love, we love creating with you guys. Missy is always on Instagram scrolling and liking okay. people's stuff, Facebook. We love that you guys are doing this with us. It's so sweet and so special. So thanks for hanging with us today. We can't wait to give those prizes away. Um, we'll be back on Wednesday. So we're not here tomorrow. We're back Wednesday. And we're going to be doing some animal tracing, shadow tracing. Not necessarily an animal. We're going to do shadow tracing. I'm going to focus on animals. But here's what you're going to need for that. We are going to need an adjustable lamp, like a book lamp, 
or a flashlight that mom or dad or helper can hold while we cast a shadow, okay? So maybe like a little llama like this or something that we can cast a shadow down, mom or dad can hold, and you kiddos can trace. You're gonna trace whatever shadows cast. So little llama, maybe, maybe, maybe a little llama, maybe some penguins, right? I'll have some bigger animals. I didn't have them here at the studio with me because that Asher little crazy guy that's with me sometimes, his animals are at home. So um, I did have some little penguins and stuff here that you could do, um, little dinosaurs, maybe a big dinosaur, but we're gonna cast a shadow on those and we're gonna give them a cool looking profile and then we're gonna trace those out and then we're gonna color them um, with anything you have. But we're gonna focus on trying to use these chalk pastels again, because those are super cool. We can make a really neat silhouette thing going on with, um, pastels and shadows. Um, I'm also going to be using some oil pastels. So many of you guys have had oil pastels and I haven't had an oil pastel video for you guys. So I'm going to use oil pastels myself on Wednesday to kind of fill in um, what I create with my shadows and we're just going to go through and make a whole, you know, a drawing and illustration. So I'll use oil pastels in mine. Um, whoever's with me might use chalk pastels, might use markers, crayons, whatever you have use what you have that's our other that's our other theme here um you're just going to need some paper any any paper you have i'll just probably use mixed media paper copy paper um the card stock that you have is totally fine whatever you want to use is great oil pastels and chalk pastels are really we we got some some ambulances going by bear <laughs> with us um chalk pastels or oil pastels are really opaque so you can go on top of those colored card stocks if you have leftovers those are a great thing to use for this tutorial and a pencil. So those are the basic tools that you'll need for Wednesday. We will have um, those listed out for you like we do every morning before the tutorials too. So if you have to, you know, hop back and see those or you can watch us on the replay over at YouTube and you can throw them up. Um, he's got the supplies listed that you can scroll back to and check it out, get your stuff together. But that's what we do in Wednesday, Friday, we're gonna play with polymer clay again. We're gonna make some bowls and some beads and talk about how we can marble some of those together and make really, really cool things. Um, we appreciate all the donations and the help. The ways that you can continue to help us are our Venmo at Tabitha-McClung at um, Venmo or paypal.me slash Manor. Those are still in there. Thank you guys so much for all of your help and all of your love and all the interaction. We love hanging with you guys. I hope everybody has had a great time with this tutorial today. I can't wait to see what you guys do with them. If you incorporate other works of art, if you do something totally different that I didn't even know about, I, I really can't wait to see what you guys do with this. Make sure to share them. I want to see them later. And thank you guys for hanging with us. We'll see you on Wednesday. So have a great day, guys. Take care of each other. We'll see you on Wednesday.